So I grew up in Baton Rouge, went to LSU as an undergraduate, studied printmaking, then moved to Massachusetts where I got my MFA in sculpture and um, met my husband, who's there skiing right now with my son. But, um, and uh, then moved back, then moved to Houston, then moved back to Baton Rouge after having gone for 15 years. Left swear and I'd never come back. And then, you know, I'd like a lot of us, I got drawn back to my hometown. And I teach at LSU now, I'm in the painting department and been back here um, since 1998, and I think I've been with the gallery since about 2000. So I've been here quite some time, and I love being able to show at this local gallery that I've really enjoyed watching it grow over the years. And um, I'm honored to show with the artists, artists that I am. I think it's a great group this time. I've been really happy about it. Um, and I think a lot of what is in my work comes from having grown up here with this kind of rich history of storytelling and myth and, you know, the, the landscape here, all of that's part of my work. For some time now, I've done pieces that investigate our disconnection from the natural world and our connections to it and specifically focusing on animals. And I will take imagery with animals in it from children's storybooks and science books and television shows about nature and animals to paintings with animals in them, etc., etc. And I pull different sources and kind of conjure these imagined images, but reflecting on that we have animals as pets, we start sleeping in with them as ch children, little stuffed animals, um, we are told stories about life through them in our storybooks as children, and we cause their extinction and we eat them and so just thinking about all of those things but then conjuring what really become these imagined images and for this group of work this show i'm calling wolf tales because most of the work um, my work is on these three walls but i'll talk about these first are from a body of work where i was focusing on the wolf and this was actually part of a show that i had in houston about a year and a half ago and <coughs> then just put up another show there last month and when I brought that show I brought some of this work back to be able to show for this exhibit so I'm happy to be able to show it here and somewhere else um, but specifically looking at wolves and their wild nature and then how they're feared and um, they're a big part of fairy tales and thought of as these creatures that are really terrifying but they're maternal and they care for their young and they live in packs they're very social and so just thinking about all of those different ideas and how they're being forced out of their habitats all the time and you hear stories in around LA for example where they come and attack people because you know they don't have anywhere to live and so kind of reflecting on all of those things um, these are all painted on canvas and you can see that I've stitched a lot of them together and I've been doing that for some time referencing traditional women's work. And I also often paint patterns on them, referencing fabrics, textiles, that kind of thing. And actually the newer work that I'm doing right now is all on um, antique fabrics. So I started thinking about, for a period of time, I've been thinking about how can I make my work without always using new materials. And so I thought, well, I've been sewing all this canvas and painting these patterns and making them look like fabric what would happen if I used existing fabrics? So that's what I'm exploring right now. And, and in, in these images, um, I saw there were a lot of parallels listening to Tom and Diane. And I use um, images that I find from all kinds of sources. And I use models. And I use myself. And I work from observation. And, and you know, again, can point back to some of the things Diane talked about. Um, this piece kind of, it's called The Woman and the Wolf, and actually the show that I had in Houston was called The Woman and the Wolf, and I kind of think of it as the title piece for the show, um, that this image is from like a werewolf movie, and it's splitting into this different kind of reality. So one reason that I paint these patterns, again referencing the um, fabrics, but also to create a very unreal space. Um, but I saw places where you like peek into another rat reality, 
some things that are painted in a more dimensional, real way, some things that are painted a little more flat or stylized. So playing around with the idea of space and different types of styles in one piece. Um, in these paintings, I think I use myself for all of them as the model. But um, I often use, I, I always use people that I know to model for me. And it's interesting hearing what Diane says because I, I use them to model for me, but they're clearly characters in the work. And so these aren't meant to be me at all, but I just use myself partly because I was really thinking about this relationship between the woman and the wolf. And the woman and her wild nature that is sometimes um, constricted by our culture and also those maternal aspects of the wolf. Um, those three pieces on the end there are like the portraits for the pieces. There's a werewolf, so the sort of the wild woman. There's the portrait and then there's the wolf. The portrait of the woman and the portrait of the wolf. So the characters are there in portraits and then they're portrayed in these different stories that are about personal things going on in my life, things going on. Um, so thinking about domesticity and the ritual, ritual of it and the drudgery of it, both of those things that can be comforting, it can be you know, wear you down at the same time. Um, this piece here, which is called Far Away, again, references kind of domesticity from the clothesline. And then at the bottom there are these soldiers carrying a bottle, a, a body, thinking about um, that the, these wars are going on, and but they seem really far away, but they're at the same time. Um, this piece here, called Orphan Twins, is thinking about the story of Remus and Romulus, and, but twisting it instead of the babes nursing from the wolf, the babe, baby wolves, the pups are nursing from the woman, and the typewriter referencing just sort of storytelling. So there's all kinds of little things like that in the work. Um, I thought it was interesting, and Diane's again that two-headed dog, because um, I'm working on a series now that's based the main character is a, two, a woman with two dog faces. And in this one, it kind of started here. Um, so she's got these two faces and this notion of all these battles going on inside our heads about ourselves. Um, and you've got, you know, often the implements of painting and so kind of beating yourself up as an artist. Um, typical practice. And then in this one, she's sort of like the shaman. Again, the painting materials and sort of conjuring these images. So um, those are just some kind of basic things and, that are going on. and. I'm happy to answer any specific questions about something you'd like me to talk about more or any of the specific pieces. I have yes. a question about the, the three that are not framed or, oh, okay. or even, you know, they're not stretched. So how, is that just tapped directly to the wall? There, uh, this roll? is also something that I've done for some time with my larger canvases. I don't stretch them on a frame. And again, kind of making them feel like textiles of some type and they're gessoed, so I do stretch them on a wall and then cut the canvas apart and sew it together so it's stretched and just and primed. And um, then there are grommets so that I don't have to, so that then there are nails that are put in the grommets. And with some, then with these, you can see the little nails around the edges so it's treated the same way. But with the smaller ones, I felt like they needed to, they weren't, I don't know, they needed to be pulled off the wall a little bit. These felt more object like to me just because of the scale being right against the wall. But I, I kind of go back and forth. So that is, what, what kind of thickness are we talking about? Um, it's just heavy canvas. Oh. And they're actually primed on both sides oh. to give it a little bit more weight when it hangs, so it hangs a little bit better. Um, oh, I, I know what I wanted to talk about before I turn it over to more questions. Is that, just briefly, I want to tell you about that wall um, behind you. And these um, are big pieces that I started on a couple of years ago and they're collaborations with Michaeline Walsh who is another gallery artist and she's another professor at LSU in the ceramics department. And a couple of years ago we started these drawings together where we'll each start one and then pass them to the other person. And there's always been these parallels between our work anyway. And for both of us being moms and professors and trying to make our work, it's, it's a really wonderful outlet for us where we just just do these pieces in a very intuitive way and my work involves lots of sort of thought and sketches and writing and so it's it's just a, a lot of fun for me and a nice release and it's something that we're con planning to continue so just wanted to mention those but other questions yes, yes. 
Um, I noticed that you know these have more like circles, but they sort of have transformed into microorganisms. Yeah, thank you. Could for you comment about, about, about that? that. that. So off, usually the patterns in the work, um, they are a motif for something going on in the piece. These are all tree rings. And I was working on these after um, Gustav, but all the trees in my neighborhood, which is not far by, when you saw all these trees laying around, I started seeing all the tree rings. And so it's another layer that, again, thinks about thinking about nature. Um, and then in these, they're um, bacteria. And this notion of the, all this fear people have about, about bacteria now, even though it's they're part of us and important part of our environment, they can also be scary. But just making them these into these pretty things with their bacteria, and then they're you know just another layer of, the, of motif in the work. Can I ask? Is there any significance to the shape of the um, canvases? Yeah, um, I've done some other pieces like this, and. They can either be sh the shape of like a church window or an icon, and so I think of these pieces as, for me, ta tapping into something spiritual or sacred, and so th they also could reference something like, uh, in a theater, I've done ones with big sort of theater round shape, like thinking of a, a theater stage, but more so that sort of sacred shape of, a, of a church windows. But over here, is this more about motherhood or womanhood? Than you know, I don't, I really don't know. They're just about <laughs> spontaneous and intu intuitive trap. They're really about tapping into spontaneous creative ideas without any thought whatsoever. And it's such, so refreshing because I do think far too much, you know, normally I could really relate to what Diane said, you know, shutting that up. It really is shutting that off. And there, there are certainly moments of that in making the work. You have to get really quiet in order to tap into something that goes beyond our daily life, I think, for any of the making of the work. But with these, it's just purely I look and just whatever comes out. And so I'm really enjoying that, that part of the process. And then when we got ready to hang, hang it, I had Mikey come and we knew we were going to do just a salon style arrangement. And we started saying, hey, look, there's this relation, these color relationships that we started seeing. And so then we decided to put them into groupings. And she kind of helped me get started. And then I um, just played around with some, some, some more in order to create the groupings. Just yeah, I didn't actually look at them as a volunteer. No. In fact, um, there were some that right the day before she had given me and some that I had finished that she hadn't seen. And so it's, it's ongoing. We have other ones that we're working on. And so it, it, it's something that's very open-ended. So Kelly, speaking of the overthinking, did you choose the wolf uh, to do as nature our whole society? And the woman, the referencing, or was it mostly just the book? It, it, which came Oh, uh, well, actually, it, I had already started working on these before I looked at that book. So absolutely, yeah, definitely thinking about. And you know, I think I probably chose the wolf because not long before that we had gotten a dog. <laughs> and so, I mean, I think it's something as simple as that. But then I had used wolves in some of the other work, because again, I've been working with animals probably in this kind of way since about um, 1998. Uh, my son was born in 1997. And when I was sitting reading him picture books, and not in the studio as much, I started going, oh, they're all animals. I mean, almost all of them. And then thinking about the ways that they, they helped him to learn life lessons. They also took away the power of the animals. And so I just started thinking about the way that we use animals. And I also fell in love with a lot of the images of the animals that were, you know, there's this term called neoteny. And it's called, the, it's the juvenization of animals. And it's what we, Mickey Mouse. You know, so um, I just became really interested in that, and there's some of that here, like the dog face there, that's like comic book like, and some of the other ones, yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, guys.